This diagram clearly shows the four resonating zones. The mouth pharynx zone belongs to the chest voice. The intermediate zone is the passaggio from the chest voice to the head voice. The head zone, obviously, the head voice. When the female sings in the super head zone, it sounds like a whistle. The male sings it in falsetto or pharyngeal, or the mix of falsetto and pharyngeal, but never in pharyngeal mixed with chest voice. The principle of the four resonating zones is to blend or mix the timbre, the sound, of each zone without a slither, break, or crack in the voice. That is, as one goes smoothly from zone to zone. A completely natural voice does this without training. Every vowel on every pitch in a two octave range. The principles of technique were founded on the analysis of thousands of completely natural voices for over 1,500 years by the Scola Cantorum of Italy. Now, when a student comes in for a first lesson, I have them go from the lowest note to their highest note. When we meet a resistance, that's when the naturalness ends and the training begins. This scale from F2 to G5, that is G5 above the famous male high C, is three octaves and represents the four resonating zones of the human voice. This is facilitated by using the principle of the voce pharyngea, otherwise known as the pharyngeal voice. No. Hi, my name is Tony, and I'm a voice teacher. That was me singing that F2 to G5 scale, that is G5 above the male high C, and the tenor aria from La Boheme with a famous high C. To think that when I was in high school, I couldn't sing above an F4, which is the fifth line in the treble cleft. My specialty is teaching young singers of pop and Broadway musicals 
the established principles of vocal technique taught by the Scola Cantorum of Italy, known as the Old School, as related by Maestro E. Herbert Cesare's books, primarily his voice of the mind, but also elements of speech-level singing taught to me by Maestro Seth Riggs. Being voice teacher for a musical theater group made me realize the importance of teaching these principles at an early age. I will demonstrate and explain two principles that seem to be shrouded in mystery. The first one, la voce faringea, the pharyngeal voice, the forgotten technique. This technique develops the head and the super head voice of the male, the chest and the super chest voice of the female. The second one is la voce chiaroscuro, which is the light, dark coloring of the voice. I will use diagrams with my voice in the background, but here are some live videos of me singing high C's, high D's, high E's, and F's with relative ease by using the principle of la voce faringea, the forgotten technique. Thank you. By singing all tones in unmixed chest voice, including the high C5 and high D5, in 1831, Gilbert Louis Dupre changed the direction of singing from bel canto, beautiful singing, to forceful singing, which I call belt canto. Before 1831, the pharyngeal technique was taught, developed, and refined. But after Gilbert Louis Dupre, it slowly disappeared and the new forceful singing dominated. By mixing pharyngeal and chest voices, I will sing two scales ending with high C5 and high D5. Then contemporary singers using the pharyngeal voice knowingly or not. First, an operatic tenor of the 1950s singing the high D5 and me singing high D5 after. Then a Broadway musical singer and a rock singer singing the high G5, that is, high G5 above high C, and me singing the high G5 after. An R&B singer singing a high A5, the female super chest voice, and me singing high A5 after. Then one of my students, a 12-year-old boy, before his voice changed, singing a pop song with a high C7, the female superhead voice whistle quality.
except for the bass and the dark baritone voice, all voices have the pharyngeal voice and use it to some degree whether they know it or not. Now, the pharyngeal voice is most effective from F4 to F5. And when properly mixed with falsetto and chest, the pharyngeal voice strengthens, brightens, and adds projection and agility to singers of pop, Broadway musicals, and opera. It eliminates fear of the high notes, the money notes. This is one practical way of using the mix of pharyngeal and falsetto for the conventional pop or Broadway musical singer. And this is mixing pharyngeal and chest in the tenor arias from La Boheme and Faust, singing the famous high C5. La voce pharyngea, the pharyngeal voice, the forgotten technique. Let's break it down. Firstly, the pharyngeal voice with no mixture of chest or falsetto has the quality of steely intensity, the reverse of beautiful, especially when sung forte, loud. It is the refinement of the mixing process that we seek. I did some research on the acoustical projection of the human voice and a baby and a cat crying and the pharyngeal voice from F5 to A5 have the overtones and harmonic frequencies of around 3,500 hertz. This might explain why the pharyngeal voice cuts through orchestras or in recording sessions when the voice must be heard through hot orchestrations. I will sing the scales twice, all high C5s to high A5s.
This scale is self-explanatory. The trained ear can hear, but only the singer can hear and feel what percentages of the pharyngeal are mixed in the voice. No. Finally, the principle of chiaroscuro, which was taken from a method of painting during the Renaissance. Two famous artists of that era were Rembrandt and Caravaggio. In bel canto, this was known as coloring the timbre of the voice from light to dark or mixing percentages of the coloring. Coloring also means coloratura, which was the ornamental virtuoso-like singing of cadenzas, trills, mordantes, and so forth. I will give you brief examples. Non
I've got goosebumps. What a fantastic voice. That just fills this whole theater here. Thank you. You got a head for opera. Aren't you going to do it? Oh, I, uh, eventually. I would, I would really you're like to sing now, a separate club. Oh, yes, with Seth Rick. 